February CA Forum. Um, with us today, we have Ms. Jan from Carnegie Mellon University, and she's going to be giving a talk on uh, PICO CTF. So, uh, Ms. Jan, I'm going to pass it over to you. Thank you so much, Josh. Five months ago, I was volunteering at a STEM event for K through 12 students. I was volunteering for PICO CTF, which is a platform that teaches cybersecurity for free that attracts lots of middle school and high school students. From there, I met a student in third grade, Elijah. His family traveled to Pittsburgh to advocate for his brother's high school robotics team. And his booth was right next to ours, so I invited him to come over and play the Pico game, which is a gamified version of Pico CTF. And he came and played the game in my booth. I observed him for a while when I was helping other people. And for a very long time, he seemed to be struggling and didn't seem to understand the problem. And he's tried it again, still didn't work. He tried it for seven times and was getting a little frustrated. I almost wanted to drop in some hints, but I decided to hold myself back. Elijah did not give up. Visitors came and went, but he was still there. Nothing could distract him from the game. He was hooked. The Pico CTF volunteers went to lunch when he was there, and when we came back, he was still there. This is a problem Elijah struggled at in the beginning. This question is called feeding creatures on the Pico game. And like the title suggests, the user bakes cookies for those creatures. The game is based on trial of error and process of elimination to understand which ingredients make up the kind of cookies. So I watched Elijah try to figure this out for over an hour. At Elijah's age, I was just amazed by how long he could concentrate without any distractions. Even as an adult, sometimes I have a hard time concentrating for a long time. And by the end of the day, he finished the entire Pico game, which is, consists of six modules of this game he tried before. And normally it would take an adult a couple of hours to finish. So I challenged him to play the CTF and he accepted the challenge and even convinced his brother later on to sign up for the Pico CTF competition. I'm sharing this story because Learning from Elijah reminds me of a critical problem in our industry today, the cybersecurity talent shortage gap. And closing this talent gap is the goal of my presentation. And today, I want to share with you an amazing resource that changed my cybersecurity career trajectory and brought hundreds of people to the security industry. Today, we're going to talk about why, talk about teaching cybersecurity gamifying the education system. Before we talk about CTFs, I want to give some data about the talent gap that I mentioned. How big is the gap? CyberSeq reported that there are around over 1 million people in the, in, employed in the cybersecurity industry in the US, but over 700 unfilled positions are currently available. The gap is roughly 40% of the total required talent number. And by 2025, the cyber talent shortage gap is projected to grow to 3.5 billion. Now, despite, despite facing a critical lack of talent, after meeting Elijah, I have faith. I think the talents are there, but we need to find a way to introduce them to cybersecurity early on. The question now is beyond should we, but now rather, do, how do we teach cybersecurity? How do we teach security when the teachers don't even know about it? How do we teach cyber and retain talent? As a student myself, I had some confusions or difficulties initially getting into cybersecurity. And here are some of the problems I ran into myself. Firstly, I wasn't aware of the career options when I was younger, such as in middle or high school. I had only discovered cyber as a career 
only after I entered college and chose my major. In fact, in a survey conducted by Edweek surveyed 918 K through 12 educators are across the United States in May of 2020. And less than half, only 45% educators they surveyed said their students are learning about cybersecurity subjects. Additionally, with such a demand in cyber talents, I also found that limited cybersecurity courses are provided by the academia. A, an article by Cloud Passage mentioned that only one of the top 36 undergraduate computer science programs in the United States requires a cybersecurity course for graduation. And three of the top 10 programs offered no cybersecurity classes at all. Why is that? The field changes too fast and the scope is too big, which makes academia hard to keep up. I was very fortunate that my undergrad had a supportive cyber community. But if students don't have awareness of cyber from schools, it is more difficult for us to learn about those opportunities. And last but not least, with cybersecurity having such a broad scope, there are so many avenues and niche for students to look into. For example, penetration testing, digital forensics, incident response, governance, risk, and compliance. Each of them requires slightly different skill sets. Sometimes it can be significant. It can be a little overwhelming for people who are breaking into cybersecurity initially. I had those difficulties initially navigating through the process of breaking into cybersecurity myself. And similarly, there are lots of college students who are still exploring their career options or trying to get into cybersecurity, but don't know where to start. Although I am a student in my early career, I took a try and considered this problem. I'm here today because I want to share my perspective as a student on brainstorming a solution. If we want to find talents to fill the cyber talent shortage gap, we need to spread cyber awareness and find a sustainable way to attract talents early on. And we want to grow a community that building and building challenges to make it accessible. The solution of that is through gamifying security education. Before we dive into CTFs, we need to understand what CTFs are. So how many people here have heard of a CTF before and know what a CTF is? Please feel free to comment in the chat box. So CTFs are known as the capture the flag competitions. Jeopardy style CTFs as known in the shown in the presentation allows you to solve problems using cybersecurity skills. It is trying, it's like trying to solve a puzzle. We're looking for a way to solve problems. And when you solve a challenge, you get a certain amount of score. The goal is to score high through solving problems. Now we have an example problem in here. Does anyone want to give it a try on what is the first step that you would like to solve the problem? Again, feel free to chat um, in the chat box. So the way I would go about it is through Googling. In this particular problem, we want to know what raw 13 is. We can then Google what raw 13 is and get an answer that raw 13 is a cipher that replaces a letter with a 13th letter after it in the alphabet. And plug it into the raw 13 decoder and voila, we found the flag. And we normally put the flag in this very specific format with brackets. So Jeopardy style CTF have different categories. Skills can build up from the lower scoring challenges and we can use the skills that we pre previously learned from easier challenges to solve more complicated and higher scoring problems. It is like learning how to solve math problems. And one day we learn about addition, three plus three equals six. We practice, level of, we practice this level of addition for a while until we're comfortable with addition. Another day, we learn about multiplication. 
2 times 3 equals 6, which is a larger scale of addition. We also don't learn just one thing overnight. We get better through practicing. And something, the same thing applies for CTFs. CTFs serve as a playground and allows us to practice skills, the skills that we learned before. After knowing what a CTF is, I also wanted to share some lessons on how CTFs can be implemented. In one of my courses, Introduction to Information Security, the course was based on PICO CTF problems. For example, instead of learning the concept of what a buffer overflow is, we dug into the application that has a buffer overflow vulnerability. And figuring out the buffer size and crafted the pay payload and conducted a real buffer overflow attack. This class allowed me to have a hands-on learning experience and understood security in a deeper level. It forced me to think like an adversary, but also this CTF-based course also allowed me to think creatively and ch challenged my mindset. Isn't that beautiful of what a CTF can do in a class classroom setting? In addition to playing CTFs in classrooms, people can also play CTFs in competitions. <laughs> competitions allow, allows you to solve challenges in a limited period of time. CTFs also gamify learning and makes you keep wanting to go back to it. The same thing happens when you are watching sports or playing video games. I have competed CTFs in a team setting before. And the process of finding a flag with your teammate is just so exciting. For example, I by myself might not be able to solve one problem, but when I explain the ways I tried and the problems I bumped into myself, another teammate might be able to build upon the previous procedures that I tried and all together we get a flag. The process of synergy showed us that what we're capable of. And I think that's the CTF spirit that makes me be, that makes me feel so confident and makes me feel like a stronger person. It also helped us with team building. I actually met one of my best friends through playing CTF together. And that, that leads me to my last benefit of CTFs on gamifying security education, which is integrating CTFs in communities that brings people together. And for me, the best times was how we were playing it in the club setting. In my undergraduate cybersecurity club, in the very beginning of the semester, we hosted an all day long CTF competition. And the club brought pizza and invited everyone in the university to come and play. We filled in the entire auditorium sized classroom with students. We also had officers helping out and giving out pointers when people get stuck. It was a great bonding experience for all of us to meet new friends and like-minded people in cybersecurity. And a very wholesome story from that is the best winning team later got involved with the club and two of them actually became our officers, Eric and Emmy. It was their first time playing a CTF and they're now both leaders in the cyber club and teaching current students web security. And because of the CTF that they played, they're now planning on pursuing a career in cybersecurity. For a lot of our officers, CTFs were their first exposure to computer security. And now they're doing internships in computer security and taking on a career in security. Of course, the use cases for how CTFs can game, that gamify security education can be implemented are beyond just classroom setting, competitions and communities. Parents can benefit from having their children playing CTS to cybersecurity skills early on. People who are pivoting their careers can also benefit from learning the skill sets. So enough of me talking. I also want to get some input from the audience. For those of you who have played a CTF before, what do you think of them and how have they helped you in the past? Leave them in the chat. So I have a mission. Everyone should be able to solve one security problem. Without further ado, let's play Pico together. 
I first want to do a demo with the Pico game. Um, so we recently developed this game because we realized that Pico CTF can be difficult to get into sometimes. And we want to develop something that attracts beginners' attention while teaching cybersecurity skills at the same time. We turned the idea into developing a Unity game. So let's check it out. So in this particular game, we wanted to do brewing potions. Making potions can be dangerous, but you are up to, up to the challenge. So there are instructions telling you what you're supposed to do. Slowly hovering over them, and I can't explain it right now. So um, in this portion, it gives us a recipe um, which allows us to follow um, and put in the procedures which are in here to the potion making sheet. The goal is to follow the procedure, uh, the recipe and put in the right procedure in the potion making sheet. So why don't we give it a try and see what the first step is. The first step is put in the amber powder. So let's put in the amber powder into the first step. And it reflects it on the right side over here, put in the amber powder. And later on, let's pour in the Lars liquid. Okay, now we pour it in the Lars liquid and then mix all. I think you need to show. Am I sharing the screen? Okay. No, we no you're just sharing your slide. Oh, I am so sorry about that. Let me see if I can. Stop share, and then let me share it again. Is it sharing for everybody? Yep, we can see it. Okay, perfect. So let me just redo the procedures. Um, so in this particular game, we want to follow the recipes on the side, and then we want to put in the procedures in the potion making sheet. So let's put in the amber powder as the first step, and then pour in the Lars liquid, and then mix all. But now that we see that we wanted to pour in the Lars liquid again, so let's we only have one option for pouring the Lars liquid. Let's see if we can hover and re uh, repeat that procedure for the fourth step. Okay, so now that we notice that it is not, we are not able to copy that into the fourth step, what should we do at this time? Now that we see over here, we have a loop, a loop option that we can, um, that we can use. So why don't we try using a loop and put that in the Lars liquid so we can repeat the procedure, hopefully. And now we see that there's an error on the right side. Left bracket in line two is missing its right bracket. So now we can see that there's a leftover right bracket over here. Let's complete the right bracket over here. Miss Yan, yes. uh, we have people asking for the website. Oh yeah, I will share it um, in the um, slides later on. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, and lastly, we just put the still and try, try to see that if this works. Cast the spell. So it looks like it's a success. Okay. So that is the game that I will be later sharing in the website. So that is the Pico game, but there's also a Pico CTF, the platform. If uh, you want to, if you're close by to your laptop, if, or if you 
are not, you can take out your phone and navigate to picoctf.org website. That's picoctf.org website and register for an account. We're going to do a problem in picoctf. So this is the PicoCTF website. Uh, let me just go into the PicoCTF.org. This is the website itself. And then if you want to register for an account, in my case, I already have a website, or uh, I already have an account, excuse me. And I just hit login and then it'll take me underneath the practice um, tab. Um, that's where you can practice your skills. And uh, let's hover over to categories. So for PicoCTF, there are different kind of categories. We have web exploitation, cryptography, reverse engineering, forensics, general skills, binary exploitation, and uncategorized option. Um, so the problem that we want to try out today is underneath web exploitation. It's called cookies. Ma'am? Yes. Are you Are you trying to share your slides again? We see the, oh, yes. Uh, yes. My apologies. Let me just reshare one more time. Is everybody seeing it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. My apologies about that. So, um, so this is the, uh, p the problem that we want to try to get in, uh, to try to do this time. And what you want to do is just navigate to picoctf.org. So right here in picoctf.org, you want to hit login um, and uh, sign up for an account if you don't have one, and then navigate to practice tab. And then the problem that we're going to do today is underneath web exploitation. It's called cookies. Who doesn't love cookies? Try to figure out the best one, and it gives us a web link. So let's go into the web link. Welcome to my cookie searching page and see how much I like different kinds of cookies. So because this problem kind of hinted what we wanted to try to look into cookies, we know that um, we want to open and it's under web exploitation. So we want to, what we want to do is right click to our mouse and inspect. And because we know it's cookies, um, it should be underneath Let's go hovering over to application and underneath the storage section. So in here we can see different kind of um, different kind of options underneath cookies. We have name, value, domain, path, expire, uh, size, and different kind of things. So now we want to just try to poke around to try different options. We want to try so since the website wants us to enter snickerdoodle cookies. Let's see what happens after we enter snickerdoodle cookies and how it reflects in our inspect, um, in our application, in our cookies section. So after we enter snickerdoodle cookies and search, that's a cookie, not a very special one though. I love snickerdoodle cookies. So now we might notice that the value um, of the page changed from negative one to zero. Now, we will know that in here, that it might want us to change the value of this page in order to reflect different kind of, if, um, different kind of outputs from this website. Let's try to poke around and try really large number, let's say 100. And refresh the page. That doesn't seem to be a valid cookie. Okay, so now we might know that at this time, this value might be too big. So let's try a smaller number, binary search. Let's try 50. That doesn't seem like a, to be a, that doesn't appear to be a valid cookie again. So let's try something smaller, like 15. 
That's a cookie, not very special one though. So it keeps giving us different kind of outputs. So let's just try to increase the number. Let's try 17. And waffle cookies. And 19. Just I'm just testing the water to see if um if what number worked. Okay, so 18 looks like it worked. And it spits out it spits out a flag, which is Pico CTF. Everyone looks loves cookies. So let's copy that flag and open up the page of the question again and put that flag in and submit the flag. I already solved this challenge, so um I have um so on the website it shows me that I saw the challenge again. But feel free to go on the website and try out this challenge or just any challenges that you want. So let me stop share again and sharing my slides. So these are the links to the to the questions or the game that I showed before. Um, I just wanted to share those resources. If you're new to cybersecurity, those are the mentioned resources of the Pico Game and Pico CTF. And the slides will be available uh, on the website as well. So these are my resources, but I also wanted to hear from the audience. What are some CTFs resources for beginners, especially um, or K through 12 who want to, who don't know much about cybersecurity or who wants to get into cybersecurity? Feel free to type in the chat. Actually, let me just share, try to share the link for now so um, that everybody has them. Okay, I saw some really, really good responses saying try hack me, hack the box, over the wire. I love all of the answers. Um, those helped me a lot when I started out beginning, um, beginning when I was trying to get into cybersecurity myself. So really, really good answers. Thank you. So, so my challenge for you today is to go on picoctf.org and sign up for an account and do one security problem. Because today we started from that one problem, tomorrow more people will start doing security problems. And slowly all the schools can eventually implement cybersecurity education into their curriculum. And more and more students are aware that cybersecurity is a solid career option. So that is our goal in Pico CTF. As of today, we have more than 300,000 active users. The number is roughly the same as the population of the city I'm in, Pittsburgh itself. If the population of one entire city can do it, you can do it too. It is by far the largest security gamification platform in the world with users all, all around the globe, including Africa, Japan, Canada, and the US. And we want to present this opportunity to everyone in the world, drawing awareness to cybersecurity as a known career option to students early on to bridge the gap of cyber talent shortage and enabling students worldwide to discover a talent that they never knew they had. And thank you so much for listening to my talk. All right. Thank you, Ms. Yan, for that talk. Thank you.
Of course. Um, if anyone has any questions for Ms. Jean, um, either you can unmute or just drop uh, drop it in the chat box. Thank you everybody for your very kind words and thank you so much for having me, Josh, and the CAE community. Of course, of course. And uh, this recording will also be available on the CAE community website if you guys wanna go back and revisit that. Um, I'll send out a note to the community uh, letting you guys know when it's available. Um, we got another question from uh, Ping. Um, how often and how much do you update the CTF challenges? How often and how much do you update the CTF challenges? This is a question that uh, might be the best if my, the developers in the team answer it. Um, I don't have the exact information for it uh, with me currently, but let me get back to you on this one. Um, and I will have, if you want to, uh, DM me with your um, uh, email and I can get the question answered to you. Uh, can, can I just add something? I, I'm Gunnar Watson from Stanley Community College. So what, yes. what, I, what I've noticed about the PicoCTF.org, it changes every year. So you have PicoCTF 2022, PicoCTF 20, it starts, they, they, every year the, the URL is going to change. So it's going to go to uh, 2023, 2024. So basically, that's how the the URL is is named or stuff like that. From what I I got away uh, adopting it for my class. Oh yeah, thank you so much for adopting it for your class. Um, yeah. yes, we do host a different uh competition every year. Um, but however, like CPOCTF has a gem that where you can like just practice the skills. Um, for whether it's for an upcoming competition. Uh, for Pico CTF or for any kind of CTFs, um, it will we host a different kind of game every year. But the resources, the gym, it's available for everybody, um, all time. Yeah. All right, we have another question from uh, Joseph. Uh, does Pico CTF allow educators to host a competition for their students with a dedicated scoreboard um, and just a class register? Does Pico CTF allow educators to host a competition for their students? So for the question, um, I saw that Megan is, um, I saw that Megan is um, here and Megan is um, the wonderful woman that runs Pico CTF. And um, Megan, sorry to put you on the spot. If, um, if you want to um, chime in and uh, put in the, answer in the chat if you would like. So so for my class, for my class, what I got is we created our own uh, team. So we give an invite code to our students. So nobody else can be part of that, that competition group because you must have a key to be able to enter that group. So you can create your own group and share the key with your students, and then your students will use that key to join that group. Oh, yeah, that's a that's a good way to uh, go about it. Can you customize the competition questions in your classroom? I saw that there was you can create a classroom, like is, is in that classroom, student can like answer any question just to have a dedicated uh, scoreboard or. You can like put certain questions there. Yeah. So, um, in specific, um, to how how le the logistics behind uh, Pico CDF behind the classrooms, um, to that I am not so so much aware of. Again, um, but if you want to leave your email to me, I can get the answer to you later on. Oh, is uh, Megan responded? Soon, teachers can uh, create custom CTFs for Pico Gym, and we launched this later in the spring. Does that answer your question, Miss Singh? 
Oh, okay, great, thanks. Yeah, so uh, actually, my my question have two fold. Uh, mm -hmm. One is uh, whether we can pick, you know, some city of questions from the pool that you already have, you know, into certain like classrooms, so that there will be more targeting. Yeah, and the second is whether like we can use this uh, platform as kind of hosting platform that we can kind of design our own like one. You know, like try hack me. They have like some certain things that you can put like your own uh, questions in. Yeah, so I believe um, you can. So teachers can create like custom uh, would would pick different kind of questions in the um, in their classroom. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Right. Do we have any final questions for Ms. Yan? Hey, I'm not I'm not seeing any. Okay, so Ms. Yan, I just want to thank you again for taking the time to come talk to the community. Um, I think uh, I can speak for everyone and say this was a very informative session. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. And 